From the pages of history and the untamed prairies of a young nation comes one of television's and America's most memorable folk heroes. was a man, just a big man. Well, you're Daniel Boone. Yep. Fast Parker stars as the legendary Daniel Boone, with Ed Ames as his trusty sidekick, Mingo. Pleasure, indeed. A Kentuckian named Daniel Boone. That's me. Watch Daniel Boone, weekday mornings at 9, 8 central on MeTV. Hello, I'm John Mallis, and welcome to Connect With Me, live on the showroom floor here at Ventura TV. You know, it was less than 24 hours ago, a little bit less than 24 hours ago, that they elected a new pope in Vatican City. And you know what? It happened just right after we went off the air live yesterday here on Connect With Me. We've got a repeat performance. We've got Jim Grant of KNXT Channel 49 in the house talking about the brand new Pope, Pope Francis. Your phone calls are encouraged. 265-4331. We're back in just a moment. There is no doubt in my mind that this is a repeat performance today. We're talking about the Pope once again, and so appropriate because just less than 24 hours ago, uh, the new Pope was elected. Yesterday, we were on the air live here, of course. We go live each and every day, Monday through Friday, here on Connect With Me, on MeTV Fresno, on Comcast 187 and 43.6 uh, at 1030. Well, yesterday's guest was Mike Listeri. He is the pastor from Hanford. We sat here for a half an hour talking about the election of the new pope. We didn't know who it was. The minute we went off the air at 11 o'clock, or maybe a couple of minutes after we went off the air, we heard that they had elected a new pope. There was white smoke in the air at Vatican City. And so we decided today we're going to do a repeat show about the new pope that they elected, of course. And so it was history in the making yesterday, shortly after 11 o'clock in the morning, our time. Let's go to the videotape, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. There is Vatican City. Of course, the Cardinals, all 115 of them had gathered inside the Sistine Chapel. You saw the white smoke to elect a new world pope for the first time. He is Jorge Mario Bergoglio, but he will be called Pope Francis. He's 76 years old from Argentina. He is also the first from the Jesuit order to be elected. Pope Francis is 18 years older than Pope John Paul II was when he was elected. Well, his parents were born in Italy. They moved to Argentina where the pope Francis, that is, was born in December 1936. The new pope is a conservative when it comes to major issues, backing the Vatican on such issues as abortion, gay marriage, the ordination of women. He is considered a champion of the poor and the disenfranchised. In fact, several years ago at a hospital in Buenos Aires, he asked for a jar of water and proceeded to wash the feet of AIDS patients. He kissed their feet and later told reporters, society forgets the sick and the poor. But he was also accused of not doing enough to stop the cold-blooded killings of several thousand people under a brutal dictatorship in Argentina back in the 70s. Pope Francis inherits a host of problems, though. A shortage of priests, rising secularism, competition from evangelical churches, the sex abuse scandals, and power struggles from within the church. Well, live in our studio right now to talk about all this is Jim Grant from KNXT Channel 49. He is the host. He is the producer of Forum for a Better Understanding and the Gospel of Luke. He is our guest today. We're talking about the new pope, Pope Francis, 265 43 3-1 is our number here on Connect With Me. We rarely do this, a repeat performance, but yesterday was a historic day. Today, another historic day, of course, in Vatican City. Call in, ask your questions to Jim Grant. We'll gladly answer any and all questions. We're back with our program in just a moment. Frigidaire. We introduce the first home freezer. The first pulsator agitator washer. 
And now we introduce the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher, designed with a unique wash arm that gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances. I can't remember doing a show back to back on the same topic. I mean, you know, one day and then the next day we come back and do the same topic. But you know what? Uh, a very unusual day yesterday, as mentioned as I got off the air, we found out that the white smoke had come out of that copper chimney at the Vatican City, which meant that there was a new pope that was had been elected, 77 votes needed, two-thirds majority of the 115 cardinals that uh, took part in that voting. It was all a secret ballot, too. My guest today, Jim Grant. Glad to be 49. back again, John. Hey, Thank you're you. back again. Your second appearance, you were here in December. I am so glad to be back. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever think that you'd be back under these circumstances? I did not know that we'd be talking about <laughs> my favorite uh, pope right now is Pope Francis. All right. Uh, initially, your reaction to this pope is I think what? it was um, a, a gift of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the church is going through what is a very difficult time, and what the cardinals were able to do is step up and do something that was not expected but perhaps hoped for. To have a pope elected not from Europe, which right now represents only... Uh, about 24 percent of the Catholic world whereas 39 percent of the Catholic world is Hispanic outside of Europe and that means that the Cardinals reached out for the first time in a uh, millennium to a to a person to be the Pope who is not European so so what were, were the Cardinals what were the car you know let's roll the videotape by the way Jim we've got a videotape of the cardinals uh, inside the Sistine Chapel, of course, uh, before the vote took place. And so do you think by them voting uh, in or electing a pope from Argentina, are they specifically reaching out to the Hispanic community? There is a, a consensus that I think they reached that instead of centralizing the papacy in a European especially an Italian, if it were going to be an Italian, who was also in the front running. It was a bold effort of theirs to reach out to the developing world, to a country like Argentina. Specifically to Hispanics, though, right? Uh, in a sense, yes, because right now the church is most growing, but also most in trouble in a certain way in the Hispanic world. Latin America does have 39% of the Catholic world at the moment, but they only have people... Uh, who are going to churches or perhaps not going to Catholic churches, though they say they're Catholic. They are in Argentina, for example, mm -hmm. maybe only 10% of that country actually is going to Mass on Sundays. Yeah. But they are Catholic, which means the church is needing to look at the idea of are we Catholic or are we just saying we're Catholic? Right, but they're also reaching out, perhaps, I don't know, I'm not in their mind thinking, but it, it appears that they're reaching out not only to Hispanics, but to a segment of society uh, in that part of the world uh, that are less fortunate than we are. You know, the poor, definitely. the downtrodden. And this is this Pope, this Pope Francis, definitely has a history of having been a very, very humble, modest, simple person, though he's a professor and a very high-ranking Jesuit priest. Yes, but he cooks his own meals, exactly. he rides the train or the bus and to work. And loves soccer. This is right. a person who is a very down-to-earth person who has had wonderful relations with the poor people of his diocese, Buenos Aires, one of the largest archdioceses in the Catholic world. His history has been as a minister to the slums, as someone who has taken care of, as you said, AIDS patients, and also women who have children out of wedlock. When he heard that some priests were not baptizing babies for women who might have been having a difficult uh, moment and then now have a child, he is telling them we must uh, share the gift of Christ's love to all. So he has been a real champion 
of the poor and the downtrodden all of his priestly life. All right, we're talking to Jim Grant of KNXT Channel 49. He hosts a couple of re religious programs on that station. And your phone calls are encouraged, 265-4331. We're talking about Pope Francis uh, being elected by the Cardinals yesterday in Vatican City. It took two-thirds majority. Let me ask you something. I mean, he's uh, 76 years old. He's uh, some 18 years older than Pope John Paul II was when he was elected years ago. Of course, Pope John Paul was in there for 27 years. Why did they elect a pope that was in his 70s or is in his 70s? Why didn't they elect someone that's, you know, maybe 15, 20 years younger? Okay, when Pope John the 23rd was elected in 1958, he was 77. Mm -hmm. And they put him in because after Pius XII, they weren't sure who could ever pull this thing together. And look what Pope John the 23rd did. They thought he would be a stand-in for a few years, and John the 23rd turned the world on its head. I think what the Cardinals have done is pick a man who is healthy, but who is 76, so they're thinking he will not have the longest of papacies, but he will be able to perhaps do what needs to be done. Such what, as? Such as to clean up much that has been going on in the Vatican or not going on in the Vatican. Such as? Mismanagement, scandals, the idea that the, the Vatican leaks is perhaps the tip of the iceberg. The American Catholic uh, cardinals in particular want to find out more of what has been going on. Benedict XVI has had a, a, a tumultuous papacy with what has gone on in his time. And I think the cardinals were looking to someone who is not an insider. One of the front runners would have been one of those from the Curia who would have been very, very able to just march on and let's keep going. You're talking about mismanagement inside the Vatican, the Vatican Bank. There's that's, a, there's a lot of mismanagement major, there as far as funds are concerned. Major issue. And then this um, pedophilia and the sex scandals that have ravaged the church mm -hmm. have not, for many people, been adequately addressed. Yeah, and we'll talk would, more about that later. but but specifically what's going on inside the Vatican with the Vatican Bank and the mismanagement of funds, that's a major deal. It, it is, and that's why if you had someone who were a Vatican insider, someone who's been there all these years mm -hmm. is just going to want to, I think, move on and say, uh, I'm the new pope and let's march on. And will he prevent some of the leaks from, from happening, like the, the butler here that uh, recently leaked out some documents? Now, and what's, what's interesting is not so much that there, that there is a leak, but the fact that there is material that is very, very Damaging. sad to know that this is what goes on. I don't think you should shoot the messenger. It's more knowing, look what we are doing. But it's damaging information. Absolutely. And this is why uh, the hope, I think, of the Cardinals is to move forward positively. The American Cardinals, in fact, know that there is a dossier that Pope Benedict is needing to hand on to the next pope, whoever right. that was going to be, which now it's right. Francis. They would wish that they would have also the possibility of knowing what is in that dossier so that it's mm. not something that is kept secretive. What the church is looking for and needing at this point in its history more than ever is transparency and accountability to show that it is responsible. Well, doesn't that come with leadership? It will, and that's why the hope is that with a new pope, though he be 76, though he comes also with a certain positivity of experience and also a little bit of a shadow because of what went on in his own country during the 70s in Argentina, right. which was a very awful time for the church and for all the people of Argentina during the dirty war, he has that to have to deal with right, right now because people will be writing all about that. Yeah, that's a big uh, blotch on his resume, that dirty war in Argentina. There's no question about it. A lot of questions uh, raised as to why he didn't do more. We're talking with Jim Grant of KNXT Channel 49 about Pope Francis, the new pope that was elected just a little bit less than 24 hours ago, right after our show went off the air. We're back with your phone calls, hopefully 265-4331. Back in a moment. I'm Lou Grant. Mary asked me to do a promo for Me TV. You want to see me, Lou? <laughs> not now, Ted. Watch me on Danish. Don't I said not now, Ted. <laughs> Watch me on Me, Me TV. You don't like me? I'll fire you. Watch Mary Tyler Moore. I'll fire you. Me TV Fresno now on Comcast Channel 187. 
Meow. And we're back talking with Jim Grant of KNXT Channel 49 about the new pope that was elected yesterday, not too long ago. And, uh, you know, a little bit of a surprise to some people that uh, this pope was elected out of South America, Pope Francis. Uh, born in Argentina back in 1936, although his parents, of course, were born in northern Italy. They moved uh, to Argentina. A rather strange story. I mean, here's a family born in northern Italy, and all of a sudden they pick up and move to Argentina. But this is so typical of that country. It's a very, very interesting immigrant country. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many people with foreign names, well, foreign meaning not Hispanic names, and they are uh, Italians, Germans, and but very back in the 20s and 30s, that was almost, un I mean, now yeah. it's, un you know, no yeah. problem. I mean, it's, it's very common for someone to move from one point to, oh, yeah. to, to the other. But back in the 20s and 30s, a little bit on the unusual side, wouldn't you say? Well, it turns out that for that country, um, it is a country like ours that does have a lot of immigrants. It's mm -hmm. not every country welcomes immigrants, but Argentina is a is a country of immigrants, right. and it, the culture there is very, very cosmopolitan. Yeah. It's not definitely only a Hispanic yeah, country. It kind of makes you wonder why didn't they move here? Everybody well, was you know, coming here on you know on the boat. <laughs> many, many, obviously, Italians moved to the United States. Yeah, obviously. But getting back to our friend Francis, what I want to say is what most engaged me immediately is hearing his name would be Franciscus. And I said, Franciscus, that's great. That's Francis. Wow. First one ever that he chose a name like Francis and that he Why is, did he choose well, the name? There's a lot of reasons, but if we think that it's St. Francis of Assisi that he is modeling his name on because there's also Francis Xavier which is one of his own Jesuit uh, founders uh, but I think it's Francis of Assisi which is endearing him to the Italian people because that saint from the uh, 12th century is the saint of holiness simplicity love for the earth love for creation and a poor poor man he called himself Poverello like our own Poverello house, Understood. is Il Poverello, right. the poor man. This is a pope who, by taking a name Francis, sets a direction in favor of the poor, yeah. in favor of choosing a name that puts him in line with other popes. Never a Francis before. Jim, got a phone call. Oh, good course. morning. You're on Connect With Me. How are you? Yes, yes, good morning. Good. Uh, talk, Speak up a little. Francis, uh, there was a lot of press uh, before he got elevated, uh, elected the new pope that uh, he had taken a vow of austerity in his uh, in his country of um, his adopted country of Argentina. Is this uh, something that we, that your guest thinks that he's going to carry into the papacy, even though it's rife with uh, the trappings of, uh, of uh, uh, for example, the, the uh, Pope Benedict using the helicopter to take into retirement. Uh, the uh, uh, lavish lifestyle that uh, has become synonymous with uh, papacy. So, so what are you saying? No, he's got a good question. You, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But, but should the Pope, should Pope Benedict have taken a cab no, no, instead not, of a helicopter? No, no, I mean. let's not talk about what happened. But I think I've, the question is an awesome question. Right. I am sure by choosing the name Francis, he is setting a path not only for himself but for the church. And I do see him, and he did it yesterday, if you noticed on the clip, instead of putting on any of that ermine, instead of putting on what sometimes popes have worn, uh, especially on being, um, presenting themselves to the people, he put on only a stole, a simple stole. This is a man what of is, And what does that signify? Oh, it simplifies simplicity. When you think of the option when you could be wearing um, something that's very, very expensive and something very, very eye-catching or something so A little simple. more gaudy is what you're saying. Exactly. But that's the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. By doing that gesture, and the second gesture that he did, that was impressive. He talked to the people who were there as his parishioners. He spoke to them as the Diocese of Rome. He spoke to them as their bishop. He didn't even call himself Pope. He called himself Vescovo, Bishop. And when the people heard him talk about them, he said, first of all, pray for me before I pray for you. And there was a 30-second pause, and all of that beautiful um, St. Peter's 
Pray uh, for me, meaning pray that I do a good job in this position? Yes. Pray. Normally we think, oh, the pray priest. Pray that I'm the successful. Priest, the priest should bless us. He gives us God's blessing. He did the opposite. He said, bless me. Pray for me. And the reason he did that. Is to show this uh, compatibility with people, this mm -hmm. idea that we're in solidarity with each other. He also did this thing about being Francis, and Francis said something very important. Preach the gospel always, sometimes use words. Jim. which means sometimes you just do a gesture and it works. Jim, he is also the first from the Jesuit order to be elected the Pope, Pope Francis is. What does that mean to all the non-Catholics who don't really understand okay, that? Okay, let's talk about Jesuits. Now, one thing about St. Ignatius, who founded the Jesuits, he was a Basque, or sort of like a Spaniard, but really from the Basque country. Ignatius of Loyola, in the 15th century, founded the Jesuit community. They are mainly educators. They are mainly thinkers. They have written more books than anybody else. They are professors at major universities. This country has many, many fantastic, important universities run by the Jesuit community. Why did it take so long to elect a Jesuit? You know why? Because Ignatius, being the man that he was, like St. Francis, the man that he was, didn't like trappings like that. And he never encouraged that his Jesuits should become bishops. Because usually the track is you become a bishop, you might become a cardinal, you might become pope. So Ignatius and the Jesuits have never become uh, to the point, there's been a few cardinals, but they have never been the ones ever becoming pope. And it's interesting, there have been Dominicans and Franciscans, but never a Jesuit because it wasn't Ignatius' desire. This is rather a big exception. And when I spoke to Father Jim Rood, who is a Jesuit priest here in the diocese, he said, it's very surprising to me because Ignatius never would have himself wished this, but it's great for the church because this is a Jesuit who is now our Pope. Yeah, it's amazing uh, history in the making. Yesterday, as I said, two very surprising moves made by the Cardinals. Of course, uh, they elected a Pope from the New World for the first time, and they elected a Jesuit for the first time. So two first yesterday, as Pope Francis is now in office. Anyway, we're going to continue our conversation with Jim Grant from KNXT Channel 49 talking about the Pope. Your phone calls are very important. 265-4331. We're back in just a moment. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want on this Omana Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is now just $6.99. And this Heavy Duty Maytag Super Capacity Washer Dryer Pair is only $8.99. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. And for the second day in a row, we're talking about the Pope, this time the new one, Pope Francis, of course, uh, being elected by the Cardinals yesterday at Vatican City. We're talking with Jim Grant of KNXT here. All right, some of the problems that the Pope oh, is boy. facing right now. All right, I mentioned them or touched on them just briefly in the monologue segment, but let's go over these uh, one at a time. There is a shortage of priests, apparently, uh, in the Catholic Church. What is he going to do to address that problem? Um, there's many ways that it could be addressed, and we'll see what happens. There's the possibility of married priest. There is the That's the uh, biggest issue. Uh, it is an issue. And there's also the understanding of if we don't have enough priests, the Catholic community really stops being the Catholic community. The Catholic community is based on the Eucharist. And if we do not have priests celebrating Eucharist for us, it is a major uh, failure in our own faith. It's, a, it's a, right. a missed opportunity for grace. So the shortage of priests needs to be dealt with, and uh, there are possibilities. All right. How is he going to deal with the Catholics in this country? You have 75 million people in this country who are Catholic. Yeah. A quarter of those we mentioned are Hispanic. Yeah. The Hispanic community has a, its own set of problems that they that they need to deal with aside from that you have many catholics in this country that feel disenfranchised because of the ordination of women the, the church's stance on that uh gay marriage uh abortion 
How is the Pope going to deal with all these issues here in America? You know, you, you've hit on a really important question, John. I just saw today in the Pew survey that strong Catholic identity is at a four-decade low in the U.S. In other words, people that strongly identify as Roman mm -hmm. Catholics, we have to go back four decades to have that low a number. So it's kind of, that's very disappointing. Now, the Pope is not going to make everyone happy at all. There's no way that he could. There's no way that he should. It's not there to be pope to well, make he people. He can't exactly. I mean, you know, okay, the, the Catholics in this country that believe in abortion, he's not going to change his stance on and, that. And he can't. What's very important about this pope is to know that he is one of the cardinals who represent. And the cardinals have all been appointed, as you know, by Pope John Paul II or right. Benedict XVI. Right. They are all of a certain uh, tradition and understanding. They were all, as they say, vetted as Orthodox and conservative. Right. That means he is a conservative thinking cardinal. However, there is a way to be conservative and there's a way to be open to hearing issues and being traditional in holding to doctrine but also being open to dialogue. Do you think he'll change his stance or the church will change its stance because of him on uh, gay marriage? Uh, that I do not know but I do know it deserves study and it does deserve a pastoral response that is much more in tune I think with okay. um, the need okay. to address the issue. No, another to call address here. it. All right. Good morning you're on connect with me how are you? I'm doing fine. Good. Your question, please. Is this Pope we've got still going to cover up all this child uh, um, molestation we've got in the Catholic Church? That was my next question, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is a very important one to put on right. the table right, right. away. The it, sex abuse. It would be such a disappointment to me and such a catastrophic moment for the Church if the new Pope did not in some way directly, concretely, and practically deal with this issue. Do you issue. think he will? I think he has to. And I do think you that... Think, what do you mean he has to? He'll meaning, be forced into it? Uh, forced into it by his conscience, forced into it by reality. In other words, the situation right now that he's inheriting, which he knows, is why he asked people to pray for him. Yes, when you but said, Pope Benedict does seem to ignore it, pretty much. Um, that's what I'm saying, is that now that there is a new administration, it's a new administration. Think of it as a new administration. New president. <laughs> not with a party. It's not yeah. like you go from Republican, right. Catholic to Democrat. It's not right. partisan. Hey, we have but about two minutes. Uh, tell me, Jim, what should he do? What's the first thing he okay, should do first to address thing to it do. and try to correct the problem? We have about three minutes left. Partly, there would be this complete ability to uncover further to pursue who's involved exactly in other words not to uh, say we've done everything we could do and let's move on and to punish those involved uh, punishment is one thing but even getting to the root of the issue is another thing another thing is to be apologetic to the point of making it very clear to say we have definitely let the you question, down the question will be is okay being a pope you have to be of, of a spiritual person, a spiritual Definitely. mind, body, and everything. Okay, Pope Benedict seemed to be more into that and not handling the political issues on the outside. What the new pope is going to have to handle both is what you're saying. Oh, definitely. And one thing that John Paul II really did was become a, a traveling pope, and that was his style. But management at the Vatican, not so much. And then Benedict is a theological thinking, writing pope not managing necessarily the issues of the church. You're saying Pope Francis is a better manager uh, I'm and saying will be. He could be, better be, because it's more like this is the call. But he's not going to be like Pope John Paul II. No, he's he, not as outgoing exactly, and gregarious. Exactly. In other words, each pope has a, a reason for being and a purpose. I think the Holy Spirit has called us as a church right. to have this new Pope Francis to hopefully set a tone of reconciliation Right. of peace. Make me a channel of your peace, said St. Francis' prayer. Where yeah. there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. This is the prayer of St. Francis. I think this Pope is going to reflect this. Quickly, do you think he'll get involved in political issues like Israel, Iran, North Korea? I have no idea what he'll do politically. I also think that is not even his purview. His right. issue right now, and he has plenty to take care of, is the Roman Catholic Church 
internal affairs and its ministry to the poor. All right, how about a funny question at the end? We got about 20 seconds. Do you think he'll entertain Dennis Rodman? <laughs> I do not think so, but I do say that I... Well, he was at the Vatican. Dennis well, Rodman know, was at the Vatican. a lot of people are at the Vatican, but they're not really in the Vatican. No audience with this Pope. No, I think we're going to hope to have... Um, I think the Pope is going to be so able to reach out to the world we are going to be blessed by Francis. Five seconds left, Jim Grant. God bless. Hey, God bless you, Thank and you. you're going to come back, right? I can't wait to come back. All right. Jim Grant of KNXT Channel 49 talking about the new Pope, Pope Francis, and that's going to do it for us today. Hey, tomorrow we're going to talk to Denny Boyles of PG&E. You unhappy with your PG&E bill? Well, so am I. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.